The views and opinions of this program are those of the host guests and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up with the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic, grain, and energy solutions bored of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. Well, is the latest rally in the grain and oil seed markets over? I think that's a question a lot of us are asking ourselves after Monday's trading session. Sharply lower the grains and oil seeds just didn't feed the bull enough to keep moving us to the upside here. And we're going to talk about it as we wrapped up the month of July. We welcome in our good friend John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing here on the show today. John, good to talk with you. And um, I guess I asked a question already. Is the rally over? Is the bull latest bull rally in the grain markets over? What's your assessment of the damage after Monday's session? Yeah, I would say right now we're pretty negative in terms of the way the charts look, the weather flow, the news front. Everything's just kind of coming into play here. Really started last week. You know, we kind of got through that hot weather, saw those rains on Thursday and Friday, kind of start building over some portions. That continued into the weekend. We got good coverage on a good portion of the grain belt. Obviously, the western uh, portions were left out a little bit, as, as well as the northern tier. But for the most part, you know, the, the heat kind of got neutralized by the the rainfall that some of these totals, you know, that came through. Talking to a few producers Wednesday, they were concerned. By Friday, Saturday, they were and they were just kind of amazed how much the crop just took off with that moisture. Saw it in our area. We finally picked up a couple nice inches on Thursday, as well as Saturday night. And it just, the corn just exploded higher to a point, you know, what I thought maybe was a poor looking type of a crop is now probably in the good category. Well, I, I look at just all the downward pressure we saw on Monday session. And I have to ask, end of the month, we always typically see that type of volatility with squaring positions and, you know, folks getting in and out of the market to wrap up a calendar month. Do you think that played a factor on Monday or, or not so much, John? You know, that may have been a factor in the volatility of the day. To me, it was more of a technical sell-off in all the grains. It started last night with that gap lower. Then corn futures continued to push through moving average after moving average after moving average, closing at its lowest point in a couple of weeks on, on that December contract. Same thing on the soybean side. You know, we fell apart. I was kind of targeting maybe that 200-day moving average. Uh, didn't think we'd get there today the way things are working. Now we closed under it. So that just kind of keeps things very negative in terms of price action. And then obviously wheat still being wheat, 30-some cents lower, breaking through the 670 area, again, taking out all the moving averages underneath. So it just feels like even though we had a pretty rough day today, maybe, it's, you know, is it overextended? Probably not. It still feels like we've got some room to go. Uh, definitely on the money flow side. Now we'll see what crop ratings do this afternoon. We'll keep watching these longer range forecasts, but right now it's kind of the bullish factors, which the only one I really got in terms of at least corn and wheat is the Ukraine situation. And that seems to be on a back burner now. Uh, and on the soybean side, even with some decent demand movement, the technical side, the expectations of the market is for supplies to get a little bit bigger given these friendly weather forecasts well into August. I was just going to ask about that, so I'm glad you led me there. I mean, we've had a few days in a row of soybean sales strung together uh, to China, to unknown, a few other countries. We saw some soybean cake and meal sold on Monday morning to the Philippines, yet doesn't feel like that was uh, enough bullish news to prop up this soy market with the technical correction on Monday because the soy complex, beans, bean meal, bean oil, was probably the hardest hit out of the three major grains, John. It was, you know, and that's also the one the funds like to push around the most in that regard. So, again, when the momentum kind of broke, you know, we still look at the fact that U.S. beans are the most friendly beans in terms of price, especially November, December, going into the January window. Pretty fair comparison uh, with that South American bean in October uh, as well as September. And that's where we saw the business. Five out of six days, we've seen some sales. 
you know, in fact, last week, the talk was 30 to 40 cargoes of beans were bought by the Chinese or unknown destinations. A good chunk of that came from U.S. shores. There's some that's not reported. We'll get on the export sales report on Friday. You know, but at the same time, the trend kind of turned negative here. I mean, obviously, the USDA made some demand cuts uh, in that regard. So now we got to see what happens on the yield front. Maybe the yield actually goes up a little if the weather continues to be friendly. So that's just what the market's looking at. And again, we still got a lot of competition out there uh, that we need to continue to worry about. But this turned into a nice technical flow today. The money just kind of poured out. We saw it in all the all the different levels. Soybean oil, that had a big run up. So it was due to poise pullback. Soybean meal had a heck of a run. It was due. So it just became a complex liquidation. Maybe beans will find their footing a little bit first before corn and wheat. There is a little more friendly story there in that bean side. But uh, today it just felt like the traders wanted to get stuff out the door, regardless what species it was. When you look at, at basis, I know I, I've heard a lot of chatter from farmers. That basis has really fallen apart here the last month or so. And there's you got end of the month, you got some commercial pressure out there in the market, it sounds like. I, I mean, w what's your take on, on that side of the equation here? And, you know, thinking about farmer selling or anything, I mean, I. You know, it's just that's an interesting dynamic here to look at with this recent rally basis has not been that strong john you know that may be an indication to again where the end user is with their supplies are they getting comfortable enough now that they can get through till so we see some fresh harvested corn and beans we're going to start seeing some of that here out of the south pretty soon you know again we always kind of run into that window when the old crop story basically falls apart and then it shifts to the new crop and we see basis kind of tumble uh, maybe we're in that window here now. It's usually middle August, first of September. We always kind of see that happen, you know. But the way the market's acting, maybe it's kind of triggering in a little bit sooner this year. You know, again, the market's basically been telling you, at least for corn, that you know, hey, it does not want bushels. I mean, look at the carry from September to December, then December out to the out to the spring months. Just saying, we've got enough here. We're comfortable. Beans a little different story, but boy, it was really difficult watching September fall sixty cents today. You know, we saw that big drop in the August contract on first notice day last week. Just kind of saying, you know, hey, this was overvalued, and some money needed to come out. Now again, you know, we're still thirteen thirty for November beans. Maybe we ran a little higher than we needed to in that last, uh, you know, that last run up. Just given the the numbers and the weather and things of that nature. You know, but at the same time here now, we're seeing that demand. Hopefully that will help this market find some footing. You know, but I said, I think today it just kind of got caught in the wash and the technical side just continued to push this B market down. I think that $13 window is going to be a pretty key spot that we're kind of just hanging above here, about 30 cents of over it at the close. We do have some other points I'm watching. If we do break 13, that 1275, which was kind of the beginning of this little run out, could mm -hmm. be just one of those downside targets that could trigger some buying to step back into this market. Well, John, I you know I want to play devil's advocate a little bit here. You know, one two days doesn't always make a trend. So I, I mean, on on the flip side here, if I'm a if I'm a farmer and I'm looking at this board and I, I'm looking at some of the moves and this technical picture, sh protecting the downside here, protected some risk. I mean, you know what what's the thoughts there of some things we could do, John? You know, of the two grains, again, maybe a little more supportive on the soybean side that we can find some footing. But, you know, there's still some fairly cheap puts out there. Again, we got a USDA report on the 11th of August. That report's going to be done by Farmer Survey. They're going to be looking at the weather in July. You know, the producers got to ask themselves, how was my weather in July? Not everybody was in a great spot, but a lot of people saw things improve to the point that they probably will keep yield projections fairly steady. You know, we'll see if the USDA comes along with that. Do they stay at the 52 for beans? Do they stay at 177 and a half for corn? And so I almost be a little worried it maybe goes up a tick just because of the way they do their methodology. We won't get any boots on the ground measurements until the September report. You know, then we'll get a little better, you know, idea what's possibly out there. So, but with that, you know, again, we're watching a market here that, you know, soybeans is the one I was, like I said, could find a little more footing just because of the demand side, the demand one we're in. Corn's concerning here. That $5 level is going to be fairly key. We came within a few, you know, a few cents of it today. 
I'm thinking we got a test of that 480 low. I think that's a possibility just the way the money wants to flow. You got wheat looking weak in the charts. Like it's got some more room to drop as well. And realistically, I don't have a bullish story other than the Ukraine for corn right now. The weather improves, the yield stays big. This market may want to go ahead and try to find some demand. And the best way it's going to do that is to lower the price. Well, John, crude oil up around 1% on the day. Crude's back above 80 uh, here, and it's been holding there now for about a week or so. I would have to think crude eventually could be supportive to grains and oil seeds. Maybe not. What's your thoughts? It can be, you know, and again, it just kind of comes down to the complex. You know, we've had a pretty good correlation between crude oil and soybean oil. Obviously, that didn't follow suit today with the, the bit of a technical washout. You know, I, I think for corn, though, even though the crude oil price is firming up a little bit here, that does help the ethanol side and some of the profit margins there. I really think this corn market, even though it's not our major usage point as export demand, we need to see where we are on the global scale with prices. And I think that's still going to be the trigger. We need to see somebody step into this market and start buying U.S. corn uh, and, and pretty good mass at the same time just to say, hey, we're at a price point where the end user wants to step in. And we're not finding that right now. You know, again, we could see yield come down, even if the USDA makes an adjustment, 172, 173, that's four or five bushels per acre from where we are, move some demand factors around. We're still well over 2 billion bushels of carryover. So that's still the elephant in the room here is the demand and what the USDA can do with that balance sheet. You know, not to mention even the old crop side with a month left to go in the marketing year and where we are in terms of sales and shipments and things according to the USDA expectations there. Does that add a little money, a little bit to the carry in? Those things we'll find out with some of the adjustments they'll make in August. We're having a conversation today with John Heimberg from Total Farm Marketing. John, let's talk livestock, cattle trade. You know, wrap it up last week, got kind of choppy. Uh, cash trade took forever to develop. And when it finally did, it wasn't that exciting. Uh, and then you came in here on Monday, fairly mixed action in fats and feeders. So what's your assessment of this cattle market right now? Is it going to stay choppy, do we think? W what are you seeing right now? Well, we got a bit of a downward slope, obviously. Now, we did get off the lows a little bit today. I think that got fueled up a little bit by the feeder cattle market, finding some footing after a fairly rough start, triggered by the strong sell-off in the corn market. You know, we've been higher nine consecutive months. We were closing out month 10 today. We did hold on to enough gains today or for the monthly side to put make it 10 consecutive months, but we're trading well off the high. So it's a chart that even on the longer term charts is starting to look a little tired, especially in those front month live cattle. I can look at them today. You know, we did close under some resistance, even though we came off our lows. We could pull this thing back a few dollars. Cash trade last week. It wasn't anything impressive, down a buck or so based on the region. The one thing I did see, though, that beef production was down about 3% last week. Is that a reflection of the hot weather? I think it was just also a reflection of the Packers just saying, hey, we're not making money here. We're going to tighten up the supply chain a little bit, back up some cattle, get those retail prices a little bit higher so we can offer some better cash down the road. But it's just in a window here. I think we're going to be in a little bit of limbo. Charts are looking negative. The funds have been sitting along the cattle market for a long time now. Do they see some money move out? Obviously, the wild card still continues to be what happens with feeders in the corn market. If we see a further break in prices, and like you know, today it helped turn the front end of the feeder market back to positive territory. You know, that's going to keep the cattle market supported overall in what looks like a little bit of a tired market right now. How about in hogs? I noticed front month of August doing its best on Monday to get closer to that cash index, which is hovering around 105 and futures closing uh, 104.12. So uh, front month hogs had an okay day. Deferreds were a little lower. Uh, what's your thoughts at hogs? Are we, are we going to continue to see some money flow here into the hog market, John? Still looking like it. I mean, actually, midday retails today, we're up six bucks on those hog carcasses. And I, that's what kind of turned that market around. You know, we we're trading negative most of the morning and, you know, cattle was actually a little more on the positive side off the first initial trades. But, you know, then we see that strength there as well as, you know, that index again, trading basically flat at 105. August is catching up. Still looks like October, December, maybe a little undervalued, especially if those kind of fundamentals hold together. So it still feels like there's at least some money flow into the front end of this market here. Uh, now, obviously, August is getting fairly close to expiration within the next month or so here. We'll see how this kind of plays out. But that retail strength today, at least at midday now, we'll see how it closes. 
uh, on terms of those afternoon numbers. But it was a nice jump in carcasses getting up to the 119 level. That just provides a packer more incentive to build up for hogs, you know, and keep this hog price at least firmed up here at this window. It's, you know, things still look pretty good for that August contract. John, dairy market, seeing some green on the screen there on Monday. What's your thoughts with how this dairy market has been looking here the last couple of weeks? You know, extremely volatile, quick recovery in prices, kind of felt like things were going to turn over. But then all of a sudden, cheese jumps up a nickel on blocks, 10 cents on barrels today. That gives us our strength. Now, we faded off our high, so, you know, maybe the $17, $18 window that we're at, upper 17s on an August contract, might be where we need to pull up here. You know, just couldn't get going today. I know we were trading about 60 cents higher in the August, finished the day about 40 cents higher. Just kind of tells you maybe there's some sellers here at that point. But that was a, a pretty quick recovery in a cheese market that was kind of rounding out a little bit. And, you know, that's when we saw the rally stop. So if the cheese prices can continue to climb, that brings extra flow into the money side. I could keep the cattle market moving or the dairy market moving a little bit higher. But again, look, you know, it looks like a little bit choppy, maybe get range bound here after the way we traded last week. All right, John, before we wrap it up here today, I know not a fun day to talk markets with a lot of red, a lot of pressure there, but any final thoughts you would share? Anything you want to just reiterate to folks here as they take a look at what's going on with the marketing plan right now? You know, there's still some good value overall. I know it's not where we were, you know, a handful of months ago, and everybody would love to have those prices back, but you know, there's still room to go down in this market, especially on the corn and wheat side of things, given the global numbers, given where we could be in the U.S. side of it. You know, so don't just turn hope into a strategy here. You know, at least secure some things if, it, if it's just out of the money puts, just to make sure you got some type of floor, keeping the top side open if you're optimistic there. You know, or go ahead and make the sale, watch the market fall, come back and reown it. You know, those things. I mean, it's going to be a volatile market. This is the next leg down, at least it looks like right here. The next couple days will be a very big key. If we can hold the bottom of this thing, or are we going to go ahead and put some new lows in? I've been holding the 460 target for quite a while. Feels like an area that we could land, go, go reach to with the momentum if it continues past today. John, if folks want to reach out, get some advice from you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing, how can they get a hold of you? Sure, love chat with them anytime. Give me a call, 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email, John H. at totalfarmmarketing.com. And again, don't forget that website of ours, totalfarmmarketing.com. Again, a lot of great information for people out there. John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. Always great to talk with you, sir. Have an awesome week, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll talk to you then. That's going to do it for Market Talk here today. Find us online at markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.